Amen. Tonight we're going to be in the book of Luke. I'm going to begin reading at chapter 12, and I'm going to begin reading at verse 13. Um, and tonight, last week, uh, last Wednesday night was just a, a Wednesday night where the Lord just spoke to me. Not to speak to me to speak to you, but he spoke to me personally. And um, as one that listens to the Lord, the Spirit of God, when the Spirit begins to move and speak to me, um, I take it at heart. And I shared with our worship team Sunday morning that when we step on this stage, and it shouldn't be a stage, when we step on this platform to lead worship, to minister the gospel, to share the message, that we need to remember our purpose. And uh, that has stuck with me all week since last Wednesday night, purpose. And I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about the purpose of life. What is life? You know, we, we talk a lot about the political situation and everything that's going on about what lives matter. Do these lives matter? Do these lives matter? Listen, I just want to tell you that every life matters in the eyes of God. And the reason I know that is because of John three sixteen. God sent His only begotten Son in the world to, to die for the world, that through Him they may be saved. Uh, he didn't leave any, anybody out. He said the whole world. And so all lives matter. It doesn't matter how short you are, tall you are. It doesn't matter who you are. Your life matters. But the thing is, is we've got to understand the value of life. And so I began to do some research on that word purpose, and I'm going to talk about purpose in just a moment and the value of life. But purpose is simply the, the reason we do things, why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, that is the purpose. Uh, some of you are going to get up in the morning and you're going to go to work and you're going to you know, go through a routine that you go through. Some of you are going to work physically. You're going to do things with your body that... You wouldn't normally do, but you're going to do it because you have a family, you have, you have children, maybe you have a spouse, maybe you have a mom, dad you're taking care of. doesn't matter who it is, but you're going to go to work for a purpose, and that purpose is, is to bring home money so that you can take care of your family. Some of you are going to go to work tomorrow, and maybe your job isn't physical, maybe it's mental, maybe it's uh, something that you have to use your brain for, and it's stressful. You're going to put your body and your mind through all the things that you're going to do so that you can bring home money to take care of your family. That's your purpose. That's why you're doing what you're doing. But sometimes in doing everything that we do, we lose focus of what our purpose is. Uh, we get weary in well-doing. We get tired. We get wore out. And tonight, I want to put some um, thought behind the value of life. What is, what is your real purpose? Besides going to work every day, besides providing for your family, what is your purpose? What are you trying to accomplish? And Jesus is going to deal with this very thing in Luke chapter 12. And I'm going to begin again reading at verse 13. And it says, And one of the company, Jesus was surrounded by a lot of people, said unto him, Master, uh, speak to my brother uh, that he divide the inheritance with me. So apparently there was a man that was listening to Jesus teach and talk and he comes to Jesus, he calls him master and he says, Master, uh, please tell my brother that he needs to share his inheritance with me, that he needs to split it with me. And he was coming to Jesus with a, a matter that, that, that I've seen happen over and over again in my life where there's an inheritance and there's a battle over who gets what and there's a struggle over how much do I get and this get and... And I've seen it divide families, and I've seen it hurt people, and that's not what I'm preaching on tonight or, or teaching on tonight, but that's what was going on. Verse 14 says, and he said unto him, now this is Jesus speaking, he says, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? In other words, it's, it's not my job to divide anything. It's not my purpose. It's not my uh uh, in my job description to do that. Nobody has made me the judge or the divider. So notice what Jesus is saying to him. It's not my purpose. This is not why I'm here. This is not what I'm going to do. Again, we always got to go back to what our purpose is. Verse 15. And he said unto him, take heed and beware of covetousness. Now, to covet something means to have a a desire or a greed, a, a, a 
a desire to have more. It's a fleshly desire. You covet something. You want it so bad you can't live without it. And he begins to to tell them to be aware of coveting too much. You know, there's a lot of a lot of people that 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 some is never enough. There's never enough of one thing or or something to fulfill their lust, their their desire to have so much. And so Jesus gives a warning to to be aware of this, to make uh, earthly gain or riches our greatest desire in life. And he even warns us, really, that this is a fatal mistake when we seek uh, riches, when we use our life, the, the, the moments that we have. The Bible talks about life, how fragile life is and how short life is. It tells us that life is like a vapor. It's here one moment and it's gone. We can go to the cemeteries today and, and drive out there and you can walk by all the headstones and see that life is fragile. There's some people that have little life. There's people that have long life. But life is fragile. And I promise you, the older I get, the more I realize that the time we have is to be cherished. And we should do all that we can to make our life count to have a purpose beyond just getting things someone could say amen to that and so we find here that he says beware of this for a man's life and i want you to underline this if you got a bible consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses now that is opposite of everything that we learn in the United States of America, because our country is built on capitalism. It's built on working hard and getting more and getting more. And we're taught to, 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 to put up. We're taught to store. We're taught to, to plan for the future. We're taught to get, 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 get. And all of us at times, we're guilty of that. We, we focus so much on the getting that we forget that that's not really the measure of a man's life or a woman's life. It's not what it really consists of. It's something different than that. And, and I'm going to get to that in just a moment. But we find here that a lot of people are caught up with greed. And if you go and you study the Greek word for greed is planexia, which really means the thirst for having more. So greed is the thirst for having more. How many of you can sit there tonight and watching this Say you have enough. I know as far as my wife and I, I can say if I don't ever possess anything else, I have more than enough. God has blessed me with more than enough. And, and, and so all of us can take a look around and you can identify things that you've bought, that you purchased, that you've wasted your hard-earned dollars on that's just laying around somewhere on your property that you're not even using, but you had to have it because you had a desire for it. It is something that rises up in our flesh that we just got to have it. We got to get one more thing. We got to have one more, one more hat, one more pair of shoes, one more, I don't wear dresses, but dress. We got to have one more fishing lure. We got to have one more whatever it is. It seems like it's never Enough, we're always collecting. And how many of us go around and we brag about what we have? Hey, look what I got. Man, they had this new thing over here. They had this new thing over there. And we work so hard to go get this new thing. Is that what our life has become? A life of getting? A life of purchasing? A life of laboring? Jesus said that's not what matters. Let me move on just a little bit. Now, I want to differentiate between greed because covetousness does not refer to providing for one's needs and those of one's family. It's different. We know in Proverbs that he talks about not to be as a sluggard, not to be lazy, but to be one that goes out and works, be one that provides for your family. We're supposed to provide for our family. We're supposed to go out and toil the ground. We're supposed to go out and work to make sure that we have food and we have clothes and we can 
buy the things we need. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about when it gets to a place where greed comes in. And he's going to give us an example in just a few moments of what he's really talking about. While we work for our needs, it's okay. However, we must not, not trade the riches with God for the riches of this world. Amen? Sometimes we get so concentrated on getting wealthy, gaining, 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 that we put God aside. We put our relationship aside. And that's not what we need to do. We need to focus on our relationship with God because in the grand scheme of things, when we pass from this earth to eternity, it's not about how much you had. It's about what you have. I want you to think about that. It's not about what you had. It's not about the boat you had. It's not about the car you had. It's not about the home you had. Yeah, your kids are going to like it. But I'm telling you, what's going to matter is what you have when it comes to your relationship with God. Amen. Let me move on. Verse 16. And he began to speak a parable unto them, saying... The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no more room where to bestow my fruits. In other words, he was blessed. His ground. Now, you got to think their time is different than our time. His income, his goods came from the ground that he labored. He toiled and he was blessed. It produced much fruit. And he said to himself, you know what, self, I'm doing really good. I'm going to go and I'm going to take and I'm going to bless other people. No, that's not what he said to himself. What he said to himself, I'm doing so good. I need to tear down these barns and I need to build some bigger barns. So I got place to store everything that I have. Notice that it wasn't about helping other people. Notice that he did not give to those in the community that he blessed him with. He didn't do those things. He put up for himself. Greed always focuses on self. Amen? Begin to focus on self. And this is what happens. He, and he said, this I will do. I will pull down my barns. I will build greater barns. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. So he was thinking to himself, this is what I'm going to do. I, I've got a plan. I'm going to put all this stuff away. I'm going to put it in these barns, and then I'm going to take it easy, and I'm just going to retire. Kind of, sort of. Verse 20 says, but God said in him, you fool. Now I want to pause for just a second. In today's society, and I, I'm, I'm focusing on what if I retire. I'm putting things up. I'm trying to do those things. But I'm also giving. I'm also helping. I'm also doing a lot of other things. This guy wasn't doing any of those other things. He was just putting up for himself. I know a lot of preachers preach against putting up for retirement and all these things. I don't preach against that because I believe we ought to put up for ourselves. But I also know that we ought to give. I know that we ought to tithe. I know that we ought to be a blessing to other people. I know that we need to do that. If we're not giving and we're not supporting and we're not helping people that need food and we're not pouring out into the community, then we're doing things wrong. But what he did was simply for himself and the Lord called him a fool, said, thou fool. Now, why would he call him a fool? Because his purpose was wrong. He says, but God said, thou fool, this night, your soul is going to be required of you. Then whose shall these things be? What has thou provided? In other words, at this moment, those barns being full is not helping you. At this moment, everything that you put away is not helping you because you did nothing to lay up treasures in heaven. You did nothing to help anybody else out. See, we can do everything for ourselves. And we can miss out on the blessing of helping others out. We can miss out on the blessing of being a blessing to other people. And 
we can miss out on the opportunity that we have in this short period of life that we have to have a great relationship with God. He said, your soul is going to be required of you. And he says, then who are those things going to be? Who's going to enjoy your fruit now that you're gone? Not you. Because you can't take it with you. Verse 21 says, so is he that lays up treasure for himself. So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Now, what makes us rich towards God? Remember, I'm talking about purpose of life. What makes us rich towards God? Can I tell you what makes us rich towards God? What makes us rich towards God is 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 laying up some treasures, uh, helping those that need help when we have the ability Feeding someone that's hungry because they have no food. Providing some clothes for those that are not clothed. Taking the time to take things out of our own to do something for other people. That's a, Remember, the Bible tells us when you do it to the least of these, you do it as unto me. Amen? So then he goes on to verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat. Neither for your body what you shall put on. He says the life is more than meat. The body is more than raiment. I want to reread that part just for a moment. It says the life is more than meat. Our life is more than about what we're going to eat. Some of us are already focused on what we're going to eat as soon as I get done teaching tonight. What restaurant are we going to go to? Where are we going to go get our meal? That seems to be the focus a lot of times of our purpose. And our purpose isn't just to focus on that. Our purpose is to focus on the calling that God has placed in our life. Our, our purpose, our focus should be the purpose on reaching the loss for Christ. The purpose should be telling the gospel of Christ. The purpose is about doing more. But the thing is, is we get so focused on our body and on ourselves at times that we forget the purpose of why we're doing what we're doing. He goes, consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. How much more are you better than than the fowls? And which of you, without taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? See, a lot of people are are in in a place, a mindset, where they're just so focused on the next meal, on being able to pay the bills, on on what's going on, that they forget that it doesn't matter how much you worry about it, you can't change any situation. And so he's saying you can't add anything to it. If if you then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take you thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. What he's speaking to him is we can't get so consumed about providing for ourselves that we forget the mission. When we focus on the mission, when we focus on the purpose that God has called us, God is saying, I will take care of you. Have faith. Verse 29, And seek not you what you shall eat or what you shall drink, neither be doubtful, be of a doubtful mind. For these things do the nations of the world seek after, And your father knows that you have need of these things. But rather seek you first the kingdom. But rather you seek the kingdom. And all these things shall be added unto you. Notice what he says. Put him first. So many times the purpose of our life gets lost. Because we put other things before God. Well, and I'll use tithing for an example because no one likes to talk about it. But sometimes we put everything else before our tithing. When you put your tithing first, God begins to bless you. Sometimes we put others first. Guess what? God blesses us. There's been times in my life where I didn't make a whole lot of money. There's been times in my life where we struggled 
financially. But you know what we never did? We never quit helping people. We never quit giving money to those that needed help. We never did pass up an opportunity to buy a meal if we felt the Lord leading us to buy a meal for somebody. We always took those opportunities. When we take those opportunities, guess what? We're using our faith. We're using the purpose of which God's called us. We're, what we're doing is purposeful, and God rewards us. He will always take care of you when you put Him first. He says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give to you the kingdom. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags and that which wax not old, a treasure in heaven that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupt. For where your treasure is, come on, most of you know this, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You say, Pastor, what do you mean by that? Well, it's not my words, it's the, it's the word of God. And basically what the Lord is saying, and what Jesus was teaching is simply this. Wherever your heart is, you'll find your purpose. Now the question is, is what's your purpose? What's the purpose of your life? Is the purpose of your life to work and pursue riches to the point you neglect your spiritual life? Is your purpose to just gain, gain, gain for yourself? Or is your purpose to fulfill the will of God in your life, to fulfill your call, to fulfill that purpose that God has planned for your life, if it is, then you need to put your heart there. You need to put your heart there. Because where your treasure is, there's your heart. My wife and I, we've been cleaning up around the house, and I'm just like anybody else, in spirit and flesh. My flesh sometimes says, you know what, it's time to do for you. And then my spirit says, remember your purpose. And we was going through some old boxes and found pictures of youth camps that we did. Seen pictures of some of you that are in this very room that are here tonight when you were kids. Some of you at expos and some of you at camps and different things and you go back and find letters that that teenagers wrote us years ago when we first started in youth ministry those are treasures and when you start opening those treasures and you look at those things man your heart just skips a beat just joy comes into your life and it's reminding you of the purpose what I'm saying to you tonight is simply this, is remember that your life has value, but you have to find the value. Your life has purpose, but you have to find the purpose. God has a plan for every life. God has a call for every life. God has something that each one of us can do. Not everyone will stand behind a pulpit and preach the gospel, but everybody has the opportunity to spread the gospel. Everybody has an opportunity to be the gospel, but we've got to purpose that. It's got to become the treasure of our heart. So my question is tonight, or my statement tonight is simply this. Maybe you're at home and you feel like you have no purpose. Maybe you feel like you're just spinning your wheels. Maybe you're just going through the motions. Get up, go to work, provide a check. Get up, go to work, provide a check. Go through the same routine over and over again. Can I challenge you to do something different? Find a place to labor for the Lord. The next time you see a mom at the store with a child, she may be a single mom, buy her groceries. Say, well, Pastor, that's me spending money out of my pocket. You probably got enough in your cupboard to last you for a while. I know we do. Next time you're out in the community and you see something going on, stop, help. Maybe you need to find a place like we have here at our church where you can go and serve the homeless shelter, different things like that. There's always an opportunity. Go volunteer at a food pantry. Get out in the community and do something. Find a purpose. And I promise you this, when you find your purpose and you put your heart behind it, God is going to bless you. You're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to go to work with a different beat to your heart. You're going to go to work with a 
a different passion. You're going to go to work with a different joy. It makes a difference. If all I had to live for was going to work, providing the check, going to work, providing the check, going to work, and laying up for myself, to me, that would get old. I love having a purpose. I love having a drive to do something for other people. Lay up treasures in heaven. Hope this has helped you tonight. Hope this has ministered to you tonight. We're going to have the worship team come back at this time. Uh, Brother James is going to come, and we're going to, we're going to have him uh, tell the prayer request, and we're going to pray tonight. Or you want to just give them to me? Okay, Sister Shanna wants to be able to share the love of Christ at work. Um, there's been an explosion at the Lone Star plant in Mont Bellevue. Uh, I think it says they're pray that they're all okay. Okay, we'll definitely be praying for that. I know that we have some that are, are still sick in body, not from the COVID, but still sick with other things, other ailments. We're going to pray for them tonight. And uh, so as the worship team begins to play and sing, uh, we're just going to pray tonight. Father, God, I pray right now that you just reach down, Father, and help Shanda, God. Help her to be the light that she wants to be at work, Father. God, not only at work, but everywhere she goes, Father, help her to be that light, that example, Father. God, sometimes we can preach a great message without ever saying a word. God, it's our actions. It's the things that we do, Father. And God, I pray that you would just help her, Lord, in that, God, that you would give her the strength she needs, give her the wisdom she needs, give her the direction she needs, God. And God, give her the peace, knowing, Father, that she's stepping into this, doing exactly what you want her to do, Father. God, I pray for those right now at this plant, God, that you just reach down. I pray, Father, that everyone is okay. I pray, God, that you would just... Uh, to surround that place, God, that you would help the fire be extinguished, God. I pray, God, they find no casualties, God, and I pray, Father, they find no injuries, Lord. I pray, God, that you touch every heart, every life that's watched tonight, God. I pray that something that was said, something that was done has spoken to them, Lord. Father, we love you, we praise you, we magnify you, and we just give you glory in all things tonight, Father. Amen. We're going to let them sing for us for a moment. Amen.